From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to another edition of Bayou Wild TV. I'm Don Dubuque along with Captain Martha Spencer. Martha, the waterfowl season is here. Yes. The youth season is under our belt. The big duck season's coming up and we've got some special guests we're going to be talking to. One thing that people don't realize is a lot goes into creating a good habitat Absolutely. for waterfowl. Yes. It's a, a species that travels the entire continent, so it's important that Canada, the United States, and Mexico all participate hand in hand. We've got a story on how Ducks Unlimited does that. Ducks Unlimited Canada has been conserving wetlands now for 80 years across the, the country. We focused on the prairies in the early years and very early on in our history we developed a very strong relationship with people in the state of Louisiana. Between the prairies of Canada and the wintering ground along the Gulf Coast you have two of the most important areas for waterfowl on the continent and the, the relationship that the birds have made coming back and forth is translated into interest both sides of the, the border uh, amongst the people who are interested in waterfowl and wetlands conservation. Good job, fellas. And now we're full swing into deer season as well. Deer season as well as a lot of folks traveling. A lot of people go on trips for whitetail or elk or big game across the country. But a lot of folks maybe underestimate the preparation involved. So we're going to be talking about hunting fitness, whether it's simply how not to cramp up in a tree stand to stalking elk out west. There's a lot you need to do to prepare yourself as well as your gear. We're going to be talking with the owner of CrossFit No Surrender, Shane Venetia. He's going to give you some tips on how to get yourself acclimated and prepared for those hunts if you're making a trip out west. I like to tell everybody you probably want to start about a minimum of three days a week, but listen to your body. Um, Probably two to three months out gives you enough time if you're staying local because you know you're not really climbing anything too too uh, too too high. You know, yeah, you're gonna hit some ditches, and so you want good core strength, hip flexibility. Uh, fitness does not need to be this big complex thing. You're looking at 20 minutes a day. If you get your heart rate up and you're doing some interval training, uh, like I said, you don't need machines. You are the machine. And if you get out and you're successful during this duck season, Chef John Foltz takes us up to White Oak Plantation for another one of his delicious recipes for cooking duck. I'm going to put a little salt on here. A little, I mean a little salt, pepper, granulated garlic. Uh, just, to, just as I would anything else and I'm going to rub it really good in there. Now a little oil in my skillet and the key is to make sure that I caramelize that skin. Uh, now I know a lot of times a lot of these hunters will pull that skin off, you know. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what, don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the natural flavor is. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory. Crispy. And a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bugaloosa from anywhere. Double D. One of the big things that I've learned about Ducks Unlimited and something that's really important to me is that it's not just about this farm 
this um, environment here, but it's about the entire flyway. It's about our entire um, country. It's about a bigger picture. And it's just so important for not only our area to be involved, but for the entire nation to be involved. And even if you take a, a stance on one small piece, it makes a big difference in the big picture. Ducks Unlimited Canada has been conserving wetlands now for 80 years across the, the country. We focused on the prairies in the early years. and Very early on in our history, we developed a very strong relationship with people in the state of Louisiana. Between the prairies of Canada and the wintering ground along the Gulf Coast, you have two of the most important areas for waterfowl on the continent. And the, the relationship that the birds have made coming back and forth has translated into interest both sides of the, the border uh, amongst the people who are interested in waterfowl and wetlands conservation. Good job, Phyllis. Well, here in Louisiana, the vast majority of the ducks that we kill are raised someplace else. With the exception of, of model ducks for sure and a good portion of our wood ducks, which come from here. All the rest of the birds we kill are species that nest in the northern breeding grounds, uh, in the north central United States and up into Canada. Um, the banding data shows that we are fairly tightly linked to the prairie pothole region of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. And so one of the things I'm most proud of about the, the hunters and the people uh, in the state of Louisiana is that since 1965, we have been contributing a portion of our hunting license revenue to conservation of wetland and waterfowl habitats in Canada. In Canada, we have two very critical areas for continental waterfowl population. We're sitting in the Prairie Pothole region. From here, about 60 to 80 miles north, we'll get into the boreal forest. The wet dry cycle uh, on the prairies really drives duck populations. It seems every 20, 30 years there's a drought and uh, then there's wet drought. I say yesterday we were second guessing ourselves the birds weren't coming. Today there's people out walking around on the decoys, the birds are walking in. We're hiding, finishing them off. Just got to be where the birds want to be. Yeah, we're seeing the, the direct effects of great scouting. The guys at Ranch Line have done their homework. I mean, we are right absolutely on the spot. We've been very fortunate for the last 20 some years to have had very wet conditions on the prairies. When the prairies go through that dry cycle I've talked about, the boreal forest is really the continental buffer for waterfowl population. The birds that would have bred on the prairies move up to the boreal forest in those years. In these wet years we've had, we've seen the cost of repairing roads and infrastructure go up due to the flooding that happens due to wetland drainage. We need to find ways to uh, compensate farmers for the value of those wetlands that they see as getting in the way of their bottom line. We've had 17 of the warmest years on record in the last 18 years. We have had large changes in agricultural practices up and down the flyway. And so it is perfectly natural for birds to adjust their wintering distribution based on environmental and climatological and land use conditions. And those of us here in Louisiana know that. We know that because we've seen white-winged doves invade us from the south, black-bellied whistling ducks, much larger populations now than in the past. And that has nothing to do with any intentional human management. It is a result of evolving land use and climate conditions. But none of that means anything unless we have good production on the breeding grounds. And without good production on the breeding grounds, birds, <laughs> birds don't get here because there, there aren't any birds. I so say Ducks Unlimited started 80 years ago and uh, during our, our time, we've realized the importance of a continental approach to conservation from, from right from north to south. We have work going on in the, in the boreal forest of Canada, right down to the Gulf Coast of Louisiana. And these birds migrate with, with weather conditions, and wherever they stop, we need to have habitat in the, in the best conditions. They're very dependent on the food sources and weather to determine where they're going to end up. And, uh, we feel that it's important to do uh, conservation work throughout the flyways so those birds 
can overwinter in good condition, return to the breeding ground, which is in good condition, do our habitat work and have maximum success breeding and produce another strong fall flight the following year. <laughs> They're coming back. There's two. Hunting is managing the habitat and changing the landscape in a way that maximizes production of the game species we're interested in. And that is precisely our relationship with our Canadian partners. I, I think there's a, a strong cultural tie between the state of Louisiana and, uh, and Canada. Uh, most of the Cajuns originated in, in eastern Canada. Uh, and I think that, that relationship and that affinity between Canada and Louisiana still remains strong today. Certainly we share uh, an interest in those migratory waterfowl and that strengthens that tie between the, 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 the state and, and the Canadian jurisdictions. It's not just about shooting a duck and cleaning the duck, but that's important to learn how to do that too. But it's where did the ducks come from? And what is it that we need to do to make sure that your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren are able to enjoy what you just enjoyed today? Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. So when we look at our duck, it's going to look uh, like kind of medium rare to rare. But it's, it's not. It's cooked. cured all the way through. And I have some right here. Oh, yeah. And you see, I want you to take a look at what this looks like. Now, we've taken the duck and made a beautiful salad with it. You can put a little dirty rice under this. You can put a little pasta on it if you want to. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. You know, just let your, your preference uh, be your guide there. And I'll take a little bit of this. If you hunt or fish, you really need to check out 20echo.com. It's an app that you can take on the water or on the hunt. It logs all the information. It's got the date, the GPS location, tons of information to log your catch or kill. It's a great thing to have. Check it out at 20echo.com and you'll see it more on Bayou Wild TV. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Hunting season is finally here, the weather has cooled off, and you might think you're prepared, you've got your deer stands ready, your plots ready, your hunting gear, but have you got yourself prepared? I guess about four years ago I had a client come to me and he was a big game hunter. And he had just got back from hunting in Canada and uh, expressed how out of shape he was. So what we did is we made a program uh, for him for big game hunting. So you know you have to be able to get your heart rate up, slow it down to be able to take the shot then make it to what you've killed or harvested and then get it out. So what we did is we had him do a lot of body weight exercises, high, high, high repetition as far as weighted step ups, things like that. But we also had to start from the basis to get his form correct. All right, so what we're gonna do is what we're gonna do is call the goblet squat. What we're looking for is to keep our core nice and strong, our natural lumbar curve. You want the whatever weight, and this doesn't, if you're start, just starting, maybe don't even use weight, just do an air squat. We're looking for a crease of our hips below the crease of our knee. Tempo squats, you can go down nice and slow, pause, and then explode on the way up, and you're good with something like that. And we also have a sandbag. So what I'm gonna have Martha do is put that on her back. Again, a bag of corn yep. can be used for this. Everybody's got that. We have an ice chest, something most people uh, travel with, and all we're gonna do is weighted step ups. And what you wanna do is you wanna drive through the leg that's in contact, not push with the leg that's on the ground. Keeping our chest nice and high, controlling our breathing. Lastly, what we're gonna do is some dips off of the uh, 
off of the cooler. So what Martha is going to do is put her hands, palms down. She's going to keep her legs nice and straight. She's going to go to parallel and just push through her palms and work in the back of her arms. Fitness does not need to be this big complex thing. What we're talking is some of the equipment I have here I brought out. This is something I normally travel with. It's a, it's a bag, I put a kettlebell and maybe a set of dumbbells in it and that's pretty much all I bring. Um, you're looking at 20 minutes a day. If you get your heart rate up and you're doing some interval training, uh, like I said, you don't need machines, you are the machine. Last thing we're gonna do is what's called a thruster with a kettlebell. So Martha's gonna pick up the kettlebell with one hand She's gonna hold it in a front rack position. She's gonna squat, and as she comes up, she's gonna press. She'll squat, up, and press. Again, all repetitions, you wanna go higher for what we're doing, for what, what our, our goal is to achieve. Yeah, we're not trying to build huge muscles here. We're trying to make you functionally fit. I say always protect your lower back. Majority of injuries from carrying things, i.e. animals, bags, corn, whatever it may be, is gonna be your lower back. So what we're looking for is to strengthen our core all the way through, I call it my chassis. You wanna think about a strong chassis and flexible hamstrings. So when you're lifting anything off the ground, and we're gonna demonstrate with a, uh, with a bag, I recommend lifting strictly legs. Squat down, pick up, keeping chest nice and high, and lift straight up. Uh, you can reach me, and I have a website, crossfitnosurrender.com. Uh, all my info's on there. Uh, my phone number is actually my cell phone number. We're located at uh, 625 Plaza Drive in downtown Covington. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Find out if alternative treatment is the answer to your pet's health issues. Contact Dr. G at VetNaturally.com. Welcome back to Bayou Wild. Today we're with John Foltz, chef here at White Oak <laughs> Plantation. John, good to be out here. Oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do as your assistant, but you can grade <laughs> me after this and determine my pay scale on it. But if somebody's really looking to do something special with their waterfowl, Tell us what's a good example. Of that. You know, I'm so glad you asked that because uh, so often people have the, those one or two go-to recipes, right. like you mentioned the poppers and things like that, and they know how to do them well. They're comfortable with them, and it gives them an opportunity to use up that uh, that the, the, the freezer. Forget about uh, that that you know game has to be cooked one way. No right. game game can be cooked the way we in restaurants or the way I like to do at home. And this dish right here is a perfect example of it because whether you have uh, speckled belly goose or whether you have uh, any duck species, you got good, great mallet. Teal, of course, I like to pot roast and mm -hmm. I love my little teal. So I have my favorites. But on, say, a mallet, which is a perfect dish for this, or like I say, breast of a uh, speckled belly would be good as oh, well. Oh, gray duck. That's yeah, a gray, common gray, bird, too. Gray as well. So what I like to do in this particular uh, a case with these duck breasts is to brine them. And brine will not only add moisture, but it'll add flavor to the dish. People are confused by brines. Well, let me tell you how simple a brine is. We're going to use, why don't you take this and pour about two cups in there. That's sweet tea, just like you're going to drink uh, uh, out in the yard uh, you know, or, or at lunch today. That's, and that's plenty right there. That's sweet tea. Tea has an acidic base to it. It's got flavor. It's got sugar in it. Uh, you're going to sweeten it up a little bit more. Now, to make a brine, you need salt. And people think, oh my God, that's way too much salt. But the salt is just going to interact with that meat just a little bit uh, to flavor it up. So you go ahead and 
Caesar, I mean, star that. In, uh, that's a design. process called osmosis. Osmosis, See, I that's know exactly. A few things. I'll tell you what, you really impressed me with that because that's exactly <laughs> what it is. So, salt and sugar, the two things that you really need to uh, uh, just interact flavor into the game. Now, here we're going to put, you can use a little honey, you can use a little mm. cane syrup, which I'm going to use. I'm putting a little honey in there. A little there more that honey in there. I like oh, yeah. it sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but what I, I really want our viewers to know is that you can uh, make these things just with common elements around the house and what you've created here is a flavor base that's all now people say oh look how much salt he put in there look how much sugar remember y'all you're not gonna have that flavor going into the duck it's just gonna slowly and I'm just using a domestic duck mm -hmm. here but you can use any as you mentioned whether it's gray or whatever it is you're gonna put it in here now I like to put it in a plastic bag just kind of seal it, throw it in the refrigerator. You can leave it in that brine as little as three to four hours, or you can leave it overnight if you want to. You're going to rinse it off nicely uh, the, the next morning, and here it is. Start to pick up. Mm -hmm. You can see the change in the flavor. I'm going to put a little salt on here, a little, I mean a little salt, pepper, granulated garlic, uh, just, to, just as I would anything else, and I'm going to rub it really good in there. Now a little oil in my skillet, and the key is to make sure that I caramelize that skin. Uh, now I know a lot of times, a lot of these hunters will pull that skin off, you know. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what, don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the natural flavor is. Now, that, that the brine is going all the way through. The meat is totally flavored at this point. I can add just a little more of a touch of that uh, pepper on this side, a little more garlic. And I, I don't want to rush this. I would just kind of... Let it, let it go. I want, it, mm -hmm. I want the skin to crisp up nicely. And I would let it just uh, simmer here. I can go into a 350 degree oven in a minute and let it sit. I'll put a thermometer in it, get it up to about 135 or 140. Uh, 135, you're still going to have that pink inside mm -hmm. to it. And then the only thing I'm going to do with this now is uh, to make a little dressing to go on top of the salad. Well, it's this done. is a good place to take a little break, and we're going to come back with the chef and show you how you can be a gourmet duck hunter <laughs> right here on Bayou Wild. And, and using the ducks that's in that freezer. Huh? You got them. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. It has more garlic onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. It has much better flavor. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. 50 years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Welcome back with Chef John Foltz today, and he's showing us how to prepare ducks or other waterfowl as sweet tea brine ducks. And John, pick up where we left off. <laughs> Well, for, first of all, I want everybody to see what this looks like once it, once it comes out of that brine. And by the way, you know, we have our recipes on our website, too. You can go to jfalls.com or just type in John Falls. We got well, they're taping this, too. They, yeah. They're DVR. Oh, oh, they, they, got, they got it. They, <laughs> they got, got it. it. Okay, good. So here we are. So the skin's going to be nice and crispy. And I just want to make sure at this point, I'm going to be honest, I like duck about medium rare. Mm -hmm. A lot of people kind of stay away from that and they want it cooked all the way. That's fine. The, the brine is going to add additional moisture, which makes the well-done duck taste mm -hmm. so much better as well. So, uh, like I said, I would go into the oven. With, now, let's make a little salad dressing right. real fast. All right. All right, give me that, that egg yolk right there. You can right. dump it right in, and uh, you can just, yeah, that's all I need. And then a little uh, red wine vinegar. We make it a little, uh, just a little vinaigrette. Uh, that little orange juice right there. Uh, and again, you don't have, you know, we make in this uh, little Creole mustard, but my guys, all the salad dressings in the store, you can go into the store and find some interesting thing that's going to be just great with this. Now, I want to put in my 
my, uh, uh, my basil and thyme, my little onion, my garlic. You see, we're still seeing what little Cajun cooking here. You see that? How much you of that? Jump, all dump it all. Dump it oh, all. Let's go with dump it. Dump it all. In there. <laughs> you got any more? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's some no, flavor there. That's some well, good Cajun now, stuff. Now you have a little cane syrup right next to, right, right. on the bottom, right there. You can mm -hmm. put that in. Again, we're going to put the cane syrup in. We put some sweet. Ooh, that looks now, like steams. Huh? Now you're going to put <laughs> half of that olive oil and half of that. Uh, and again, all of these recipes are really easy. Most cookbooks, there's plenty. And about half of that is going to be good. That's perfect. And then you have a really great vinaigrette mm -hmm. as well. And that's going to go over the duck on the salad. Now, one thing I want to tell the, the viewers, if you think of a ham, a ham, when you, you, you cut it open raw, it's going to be red on the inside. When you brine that ham or when you go to the store to buy sliced ham, it's got that nice pink look mm -hmm. to it. Well, it's not raw. Brining cooks the meat totally, but keeps that pink, juicy flavor mm -hmm. on the inside. That's the purpose of the brine. So when we look at our duck, it's going to look uh, like kind of medium rare or rare, but it's, it's not. It's cooked. cured all sure. the way through. And I have some right here. Oh, yeah. And you see, I want you to take a look at what this looks like. Now, we've taken the duck and made a beautiful salad with it. You can put a little dirty rice under this. You can put a little pasta on it if you want mm -hmm. to. It doesn't, doesn't uh, really matter. You know, just let your, your preference uh, be your guide there. And I'll take a little bit of this dressing. Just kind of. We almost there. We drizzle, almost there. <laughs> <laughs> drizzle over that duck like that. And of course, on the salad oh, itself. Oh, perfect. Now, now, you see. You might want to. You might want to take a piece of that. Well, we're going to get to that. We're <laughs> going to get to that. But fully cooked, beautiful, different presentation on game, and just get out of those humdrum recipes and start looking at some of these. These are really good ways to pr produce stuff. You will be impressing your hunting buddies. Trust me. <laughs> Thank you, John. Appreciate my it. My pleasure. Always. My pleasure. Thank we'll you. be back with more. You're watching Bayou Wild TV. <laughs> In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory. Crispy. And a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. And remember, you can always follow us on social media. We have all of our episodes on YouTube. Check out the Bayou Wild TV channel. You can also check us out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and you can pick up a Bayou Wild t-shirt or long sleeve at BayouWildTV.com. Get yours today and have a great day.